You're gonna make mistakes. However, the fewer mistakes that you can make and the more mistakes that you can learn from others' mistakes and avoid them, the better off you're gonna be, if that makes sense. Hi there, it's Kevin Ward, the founder of Yes Masters Real Estate Success Training, helping you get more yeses and more successes in your business and in your life. And when you're a new agent, you're gonna make mistakes. I know because I was a new agent and I made them and I made a lot of mistakes. And today I wanna talk to you about three stupid mistakes that new realtors make. And the truth of the matter is you're gonna make mistakes. However, the fewer mistakes that you can make and the more mistakes that you can learn from others' mistakes and avoid them, the better off you're gonna be, if that makes sense. So I wanna talk about three stupid mistakes realtors make that I made one of the three and then the other two, I just see too many real estate agents making these mistakes and it's crushing them and that's why I think they're, I believe that's the reason that there is an 80 to 90% failure rate in the real estate industry in general. Now when you really think about it, an 80% failure rate in real estate is not really that surprising because when you look at new business startups, they say within two to five years, 80% of all new businesses fail. Well, becoming a real estate agent is technically a new business startup because you're an independent contractor and it is your business. So the good news is that you own it, you control it. The bad news is you own it, it's up to you. If you, it's, it's sink or swim, you, you, you succeed or you fail. You win or you lose. The worst thing you can do is just drag it out forever and be miserable, making just enough money to stay in the game, just enough to renew, but not enough to really ever feel like you're getting a lifestyle or really getting ahead. So I wanna talk about three mistakes the real estate agents make that are all avoidable, and that's the best part about it. These three mistakes are all avoidable. Number one, starting too slow starting too slow and that is that you try to just wade into the water really really slowly because you don't want to get you know it's too cold if you just jump all in you know head first so i'm going to go in slow now People ask all the time, can I start real estate part-time? And I've got a couple of videos that you can find. Just look up Kevin Ward, part-time real estate or part-time realtor. And you can watch those videos on how to get started part-time and go from part-time to full-time. And should can you succeed as a part-time agent? And the answer is yes, but it's harder because especially if you're trying to start slow. Now here's the, here's the reality of starting slow. When I say starting slow, it's like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not really gonna go in full-time or I'm not gonna go in 100%. I'm just gonna kinda learn the ropes and get my feet wet a little bit and all that. Here's the problem, it takes too long. It takes too long to get skills and skills matter. It takes too long to get confidence and confidence matters. It takes too long to get street cred and credibility matters. It takes too long to get momentum and it's when you get deals piling on top of deals and this deal leads to another referral and this deal leads to this deal. Whenever those things happen and you get momentum, it's like unstoppable and it just takes too long to get market presence which just means you get more deals from your deals and from the fact that people get to recognize you and know who you are. So I just look at it this way. Do you wanna do this slow or do you wanna do it fast? Do you wanna make money slow or do you wanna make money fast? Now, for my money, I wanna make money fast. I've, I've made money slow and I've made money fast. Fast is more fun. And it's a whole lot easier over time when you go in fast, you pump the pump, you hit it hard. Even if you're coming in part time, just hit it hard, work hard, put in every hour you can, put in all the time you can, burn the candle at both ends if you have to, and the, and the, the reason that's critical is you get then to that point of critical mass where boom, you click over the top, you click into that hyper speed of now you're making money, you're making money, making money, and you can get out of your other job, assuming that's the, that's the plan, you get out of the other job and now you just bought back your life. You just bought back 40 hours a week the moment you exit another full-time job to go full-time in real estate. And then you can really explode. I, I believe, and this was a mistake I did not make, I did not start slow. When I started real estate, the thing that I think I did right was I started fast. And I think my success is largely because I put my back against the wall. I had no plan B. 
I had no options. I had no savings. I had no other job. I quit my job. I started out, all I had was some credit cards. I had no savings. I, it was sink or swim. Failure was not an option for me. And so I had to start fast. I had to go in. I was pedaling as fast as I could with both feet. I was working six, seven days a week. I didn't have to do, and I didn't have to do it for long. But when I went in, I went in 100%. And the agents that I see that dive all in and they go in full commitment, full bore, as a professional, they are much more likely to succeed both in the short term and particularly in the long term than when you try to start slow. So number one, don't start slow. That's a huge mistake. Number two, second stupid mistake that new realtors make is starting too smart. Starting too smart. And that is you think, I, I got this. Yeah, I'm good. I got this. I've been, I've been studying real estate. I've been looking at houses. I've been going to open houses. You know, I've, I've bought and sold my own houses. Or because you have some type of background that you think will make you great at selling real estate. Like you may have a sales background or a finance background or a marketing background or a construction background or I'm an architectural background or a design background. And I've heard all of these and I've heard agents come in, brand new agents come in and they go like, well, I have a background in architecture and you know, real estate is architecture. So therefore I'm going to be great at selling. And they come in and bam, they hit their head against the wall and they find out that their architectural knowledge does not help them get a single deal. You see, it's kind of like saying, because I know architecture and houses are architecture, it's kind of like saying, because I like birds, learning how to fly an airplane will be easy for me. <laughs> it's, it's a totally different thing. And yes, is there some connection? Probably. You, know, you may know interior design, but there's, that's not a whole lot connected to actually getting people to hire you to sell their house and then being able to sell it for top dollar. Don't be too smart. Start when you start, start, start stupid. It's okay. In other words, start going like, I don't know what to do. I need to find somebody that can train me, somebody that can help me. Get a mentor, get a coach, learn all that you can. Okay, now I'm gonna be doing another video here in the near future on the worst place to learn how to succeed as a real estate agent. I'm gonna give you the little insight right now and that is don't learn from other people who are brand new. Don't try to learn from other people who aren't good at selling real estate. Okay, get a mentor or coach but get, and get all the training you can, but it's best if it's from somebody who's actually got fruit on their tree. Get somebody who actually has, has, is selling or has sold a lot of houses that's had massive success. And then learn from them, learn everything you can from them, shadow them, talk to them, go with them on a listing presentation, not for you, go on one of their listing presentations with them. Just ask, can I go along and, and, and shadow you? I'll help you, I'll do whatever you need me to do, I'll, I'll, I'll do measurements, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll uh, put signs up, I'll put on lock boxes, you tell me whatever you need me to do, and do that with them, with another top producer, and learn from them, work for them for free. Now, I know that's crazy. You're going to like, what? You made it work? I, I want you to learn from somebody who knows how, what they're doing and don't try to act like you're too smart and let your ego get in the way. And I'm totally serious. I would be willing to work with a new realtor, a new, a new, a, as a new realtor, I'd be willing to work with a top agent for free. Do stuff for them just so that I can learn what they do. I did not say join their team. Okay, build your own team, build your own business, make your own money, but learn from them and be willing to do things with them, shadow them, help them, and all of that to get credibility and to get their, not learn from their knowledge, learn from their success, watch how they do it and what they do. And you'll find they make mistakes too. And over time you'll learn they do things that are probably not the right things. And if you find they're doing something that's BS, you don't need that. There's a better way. You can get yes without the BS. But don't go in thinking, I got this, and not and refusing to ask for help or trying to, well, here's the, here's the third. Let me just give you the third stupid mistake that new realtors make, and that is they start too stingy. They start too stingy. And that is, they are like, I'm, I'm looking for the broker where I get to keep all the commission. You know, I want the cheap broker. I want the broker that's, that I, I don't want a big split. What, what are you kidding? I'm, what are they going to do for me? I, I wanna, I'm, I'm going to do all the work. I want to make all the money. Well, you may be doing all the work, but you don't know what you're doing. So don't be stingy. Don't be out there looking for the lowest splits. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that you should look for the biggest splits, but I'm saying there, I'm, look for the best support. 
Look for the long game. Where can I go and who can I affiliate myself and what can I do as a new real estate agent that will help me get wins under my belt? And I'm gonna tell you, you wanna make a lot of money in real estate, wins under your belt, success under your belt, success breeds success. You get wins under your belt, you get listings, you get sales, I don't care if you're getting only 10% of the commission. If you get listings and you get sales, you're gonna get track record, you're gonna get confidence, you're gonna get experience. All of that stuff, you're gonna get credibility. And all of that is gonna help you get positioned where you can build your business. But I've seen agents that they're like, I don't, I don't wanna work with a mentor because they wanna split the, they wanna split the deal 50-50 and I know I'm gonna do all the work and, and all of that. Now, let me say this about working with somebody and splitting a deal and mentoring and all that. The reason a lot of agents don't want to split a transaction with a mentor is because they've had a bad mentor. And I, and I totally agree. A bad mentor is as bad as no mentor. And in, in a sense, they're worse because they're going to take half your money and they're not going to really help you. But finding a great mentor or finding some way that gets you the track record, that gets you the listings, that gets you sales, that gets you success under your belt, whatever it takes to get there, that is worth it. I don't want, I want you to start with a long-term game plan, not a short, not short, don't think about the short game, think about the long game. The short game is, uh, on my first deal, I want to get all the commission. I'm just like, if I, if I can save the commission, then I only need to get half as many deals. But the problem is you're going to get fewer deals because you're trying to do it on your own and you're being stingy. Now, I'm going to give you one example of a friend of mine who's been in real estate a lot longer than I have, that when he started real estate, he did a strategy that to this day, when I heard it, blows my mind. And yet, it put him on a track to become a top producer fast. He is, the, he is the number one broker, real estate agent in all of Phoenix, Arizona, even today after all these years. And uh, here's how he did it. When he was a brand new agent, he was young, he didn't have a clue, he had no experience, no credibility, nobody knew who he was or anything. And so he said, here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna go out and I'm gonna market myself to everybody I can. I'm going to market myself to for sale by owners, expires, anybody that's looking to sell their house. And I am going to offer to pay all of the commission to the agent that brings the buyer. And so he went out and he started prospecting and he, he said, make every agent the listing agent. So when he would be prospecting, he would talk to a potential seller and the seller would be, why should I hire you? What about all these other agents? He said, oh, listen, here's the deal. I'll make every single agent, when you hire me, every agent becomes a listing agent because I'm going to pay a full, the full commission, the whole thing. And I don't know what it was, 6%, 7%, whatever it was, but let's just say it was 6%. He said, I'm going to pay the whole 6% to the agent that brings the buyer. So when you hire me, every agent is going to be the listing agent. Now, he used that and he basically said, I make no money. They're going to, and, and when sellers are going, like, why would you do that? And he says, well, here's why you should hire me is because one, you know, when I take your listing, I'm going to hustle to find a buyer for it because I don't find the buyer for it and another agent brings a buyer, I make nothing. But if I bring the buyer, I'm going to get the full commission. He went out there with that message basically saying, I want no, I get no commission unless I sell it myself and I will promote it. I'll put it out there on the MLS. And if they bring the buyer, they get the full commission. I mean, which agent is not going to fight tooth and nail to bring a buyer to that listing? That's what he did. In his first month, he took eight listings. Because you go out there and talk to, for sell, uh, to expires and for, and, and for sale by owners, and if they were going to hire an agent, or, and most expires were, he would go like, well, if you're going to hire an agent, hire me, because I'm going to give all my commission to them. They go like, well, why should I hire you instead of him? Well, if you hire him, he's not going to have the same thing. When you hire me, you're actually hiring him, because if he has a buyer and he brings them, I'm going to give him the whole commission. He took eight listings in his first 30 days. Now you're like, well, yeah, but he's not going to make any money on him. Well, here's, the, here's what actually happened. He took eight listings in his first 30 days. He sold all eight listings. He brought the buyer on two of them. So on two of the eight listings, he brought the buyer. So he got the full commission, both the buyer side and the listing side. And of all of those eight listings that he sold, he helped four of them to buy their next house. So in 60 days, he had eight listings sold and he had six buyer sales. 
He got paid on all six of the buyer sales. He got paid on two of the listings sold. And in 60 days, he had instant street credibility and he had huge market share and nobody cared how he got it. When it showed up on the MLS, when it showed up with signs in yards, it showed up, he showed up with, with this credibility. After that, he never ever again had to do that. Now he could go out and get listings and he could do the full, just regular commission splits and all that kind of stuff. But now he went out with credibility as somebody who had actually taken listings and sold them. And in 60 days, he had more experience than most agents will have and the average agent will have in a full year because he was willing to go out there and he didn't start stingy and go, well, I'm not gonna give away all my commission. Now, granted, I'm not saying that you should do that and you have to have a broker that was willing to let you do it. And basically the broker, he was, he got to talk to the broker and to say, let me try it for 30 days. The broker goes, okay, you try it for 30 days. He tried it for 30 days, got eight listings. After that, couldn't do it anymore, but it didn't matter because he wasn't thinking about how much money he was going to make on those eight listings. What he was thinking about was how much business, how much street credibility and track record could he get create out of doing that. And it wasn't, he didn't, it didn't matter so much how much he made in that first, out of those first eight listings. What mattered is that he'd have a credibility and a track record that would allow him now get more listings and get more listings, and get more listings where he was guaranteed that he was going to get paid. It's a long-term thinking strategy to get success, knowing that the money would come. And my whole point on that is not that that's a strategy necessarily that you should try, I'm not recommending it, and I'm not your broker, that, so you gotta check with your broker and your attorney before you try anything like that, but my point is, don't be stingy. Think, how can I get track record? How can I get success? I'm gonna say it again, success breeds success. Get yourself in the game, get things happening, get business, whatever it takes to find the business and get the business, get the business, get success and win. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I know this has got some interesting thoughts in and interesting stuff in it. So put your comments or questions down in the comments below. Share this video with other agents you think it will help, especially if they're new agents. And if you like it again, give it a, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on how to help you get yes without the BS. And I'll see you on the next video.